and earnings prints from a slew of blue chip names. They could have an impact on market performance. Our next guest says, regardless of the quarter, his earnings checklist never changes. With more, I'm joining by Ken Mahoney, who is the Mahoney Asset Management CEO. Ken, great to have you on the program here with us. All right, so your earnings you. checklist never changes. What is on the checklist and, and why is it so ironclad? Right, so we like to have a playbook. First of all, jumping in front of earnings, that's a no-no, okay? That's like Russian roulette. I'm, again, not if you have Microsoft for nine years. I'm saying jumping in front of these earnings, you know, they usually have a six, seven, eight percent move up or down. We don't know. But what we like to do in our kind of playbook, as you said, uh, is actually find those companies that beat estimates, raise guidance, and then the analysts trip all over themselves. Like, a lot of people don't like that. So wait a second, the stock goes up nine points, the four percent, they beat, they raise guidance. Yeah, you could jump on that train also. And again, the key is the analysts go from like hold to a strong buy, or they go from $110 price target to 140 price target. So again, stay away from the other ones that go the other way, Brad, which is, you know, they miss numbers both times. Stock's down 20%, it looks cheap. I'm telling your viewers, that's quicksand. You'd rather go with those companies that beat and raise guidance, even if you have to pay up for it. You know, even as we were discussing this earnings season during the last hour at the beginning of Catalysts, when we were, what we were hearing from one of our guests was expect fairly modest growth. There's a low bar to beat. And then additionally, you're going to hear more a lot about CapEx here. So all of these things considered, I mean, it, it doesn't really sound sexy when for the last couple quarters we were talking about what are you guys doing with AI? And that is what companies were moving off of. So what is this the common denominator that you're anticipating we could see this earnings season? Look, I think there's still going to be some top line growth. I think there's investments that are going into AI, obviously, but now return on investments. I think, look, we're growth managers. We love NVIDIA, Microsoft, Apple, all those names uh, kind of, and I, most of those names are going to beat, raise guidance, probably buy back stock. But there's also companies like Walmart who are actually using this, this data, the great da data dives, uh, helping their logistics, helping their inventory, helping a whole bunch of factors that pretty soon we're going to transition from, okay, we know the picks and shovels very well. We know their names, right, Brad? But how about those companies that are using that technology and with that have more profitability because they have more data, which they you know go to the C-suite yet, they, they pivot to area to area. That's where I think the next step of this AI is going to mature to is the use of this technology and those companies really kind of really doing a lot of good things with it. And so how can investors out there who are trying to position themselves both going into and during earnings season when they're hearing from executives really tell the difference and set their strategy from a company that is fundamentally strong versus one that is jargony misleading? <laughs> yeah, well, the market would tell you that a little bit too, right? You see like companies like Nike, they miss their numbers, they miss their estimates going forward, stock takes a hit. Uh, Intel's done it like the last six quarters, they're very consistent. They miss their numbers, they guide lower. So we know the ones to stay away from. But I have to tell you, a lot of individual investors, uh, Brad, are going to go in there and try to buy those said companies that this earnings season, that will be down 10 or 20%. We think that's a no-no. We want to buy those companies. Again, they're going to appear to be kind of expensive. They may take out the year high, but behind it is momentum. Behind it is still those analysts that are still playing catch up. So to, to us, it separates the men from the boys, so to speak. Uh, we'll see that this earnings season, as we'll see every other earnings season. But again, we like technology because they're more consistent. You mentioned before about small cap. We don't like small cap space. The Russell 2000, 40% of those companies are not profitable. We'd rather be with the market leaders where there should not be any surprises, or there hopefully not could be any big surprises. It seems like for several quarters, there's been one key make or break name for earnings season, and that's been NVIDIA largely. Yeah. What is your earnings bellwether, one company or even one sector that could set the tone? Well, I think NVIDIA, again, they're a, bit, a little bit off on the earnings, right? They come out the third week in November, they're not in the kind of you know, September end. But the CEO just said last Wednesday in an interview, that the helmet's coming out as scheduled. Remember, that was a kind of a little, not sure what's gonna happen. And that the sales are insane. I mean, I don't know if you remember Crazy Eddie commercials, you just go, ah, oh, our prices are insane. When a CEO tells you that sales are insane, you gotta listen. You gotta listen to these conference calls, these interviews. So I think from, you know, if we're in a second or third inning, maybe fourth inning of this AI move, and really the, the epicenter of all this is in the video, and the CEO just said, um, and gave you a fat pitch, our sales are insane. Stock gained probably about 14, 15 points since last Wednesday. So I still consider NVIDIA to be the bellwether. 
though their earnings are a little bit funky, it comes in the third week of November. Earnings growth rate anticipated by FactSet to be 4.4%. Uh, do you believe that we'll hit that? I, I think, yeah, look, a lot of companies do a good job guiding a little bit softer so they can get over that bar easier. I think those numbers are kind of soft. I think we're going to expect uh, higher numbers. And also on top of everything this earnings season, well, we have a Federal Reserve put, the PAL put in place after one half, you know, 50 basis point in September, maybe another quarter in November, another quarter in December. And if needed it be, there's that kind of sense, false sense or otherwise, but I don't think it's false sense, of this kind of circuit breaker, this cushion, the Fed has their back. Ken Mahoney of Mahoney Asset Management. Thanks so much for taking the time here with Thank us. Thank you, Brad. Certainly.